Let's now talk about infinite geometric series. The sum of the terms of an infinite geometric sequence is an infinite geometric series. So here's our infinite geometric sequence. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. I gave the first six terms. A2 divided by A1 is 2. A3 divided by A2 is 2. A4 divided by A3 is 2. You can see that our common ratio is 2. So our multiplier is 2. Our next term, of course, would be 128, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I take these commas and make them plus signs, I've gone from the sequence to the series, and both of them are infinite and they're geometric. Well, what's the problem with if I If I take the sum of infinite terms, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I'm going to get an undefined number, infinity. Hopefully, you can see very quickly, my next number is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And if I take the sum of those numbers, I'm going to get something that's undefined, infinity. Which begs the question, when can we find a, a real number for the sum of an infinite geometric series? And the answer to that is when r is less than the absolute value of 1. We have to be between negative 1 and 1. That's what this means. So if I have an r value like 1 half, the sum of n terms is equal to a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. That's what we learned before. Now, if I replace this with the sum of infinite terms, then my n in both cases goes to infinity. Let's take a nice r between negative 1 and 1, like 1 half. Well, what happens to our formula? We have to understand what 1 half to the infinity is. What is 1 half to the infinity? Well, let's start working it out. 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. And that's going to continue forever. Just doing it six times, I can see that I have 1 over 64. If we let our imaginations go wild and continue this on and on and on forever, we're going to get a small, small, no, one more time, small number. In fact, this number is so small that we're going to say it's indistinguishable from zero. So it's about zero. So what happens when one half to the infinity goes to zero? Look what happens to our numerator. If this is zero, then I have one minus zero times a one, which is simply a one. So our formula actually simplifies to the sum of infinite terms is a1 over 1 minus r, provided r is between negative 1 and 1. This is the only time it works. Otherwise, our sum is infinity or undefined. Here it is, more formally. The sum of an infinite geometric series, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, that means that r is between negative 1 and 1, then a1 plus a1r plus a1r squared. That's the first term, the second term, the third term. Notice we're multiplying by r each time. It's clearly a geometric series all the way out to a1r to the n minus 1. That's the general term. And then it keeps on going forever. Has the sum, the sum of infinite terms. Here it is in summation notation. Notice we could have start with i equals 1. 0 to infinity has infinite terms. 1 to infinity also has infinite terms a1 r to the i, I could have done either way, is equal to a1 over 1 minus r. There is our formula for an infinite geometric series.